Hello and thank you everyone for joining me again today. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Reza Custodio Soriano. Reza, it is so wonderful to meet you. Same here, Brie. I mean, I've just been seeing you in all the trainings and it's my first time to actually be speaking to you. We're going to have so, a hell of a lot of fun. Good morning. <laughs> Can I ask you, Reza, where are we speaking to you yes. from today? I am from the Philippines. I'm based in Metro Manila, okay. which is the capital of the Philippines. Fantastic. Yes. And the home of Miss Universe. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I say love and Manny, and Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> I love that we're able to connect from different countries. You know, um, you might be watching this replay and notice that our internet is a little bit wonky today. We're not sure whether it's coming from Reza or it's coming from me, but that is the age that we live in with yeah. the internet. <clears throat> so we're going to persist and we know that we're gonna have a really fun conversation. Now, Reza is going to give us a whole lot of help yes. with them today, I know, because Reza comes from a background where she was previously in business for herself in a data company, so very different field from personal development. And then she decided to become a life coach. So she trained in one of the world's most popular modalities being NLP. And that is where I want to take up our conversation yeah. today, Reza. So can you tell us a little bit about where you were prior to 2017 when we found you? Yeah, so actually I, I do have an extensive background in Christian counseling. So I was doing Christian counseling for about probably 16, 16, 17 years, mm -hmm. but that was as a volunteer. And then I discovered NLP it's when I decided to become professional after being trained in NLP. So that was in 2011, 2011. Um, I came from a corporate background, like uh, my background is in marketing. And then I quit my job to become a trainer and a life coach. So I was like freelancing for a bit. My husband and I were, were doing freelance gigs on coaching until we decided to form company in 2014 during those times that I was doing coaching we would have a program where uh, there would be a mix right so there's an NLP coach there's a theta healer there's an executive coach and we would be coaching clients with these different approaches um, but feeling that um, most of our clients are female mm -hmm. I was feeling that Number one, I was not as confident and secure with the approach. So every time I would speak to a client, honestly, at that time, I'd listen to her and like, okay, so what pattern am, am I going to use for this situation? I had not reached that level of expertise where everything was instinctive or everything was just flowing smoothly. Mm. So I, I was really not feeling... Um, at that height or level of confidence when I could say that client has this problem, I'll go for this. It wasn't instant. It wasn't instinctive. At the same time, I was spending a lot of time in my data science company, which was actually like 70% 70, 70 of the time. So I, I really couldn't feel myself coming out, coming out. So there are a lot of things that were pulling me in and out, in and out. Until in, 20, in 2016, 2016, someone tagged me on Facebook. Someone who I had coached in Singapore, and she tagged me. And I'm like, what's this? This is on Facebook, right? I just saw it on my feed. So when I clicked on the, on the post, brought me to the website, and I just got goosebumps. I just got goosebumps because what I was reading on the website so I was doing a lot of internet stalking to check out what, what is this Institute of Women International, right? Who is this Maz Shermer? So I was doing my, my stalking and reading and watching videos and more and more, it was just speaking to me. It was resonating to me because this is what, what happened. The moment I, I, I started reading what was on the website, I suddenly started getting flashbacks towards a vision that I had in 2010. Okay, so this is a bit of a story. You've yeah. never heard this from me before. Back in 2010, when I attended this 
this leadership seminar. So I'm a seminar junkie, right? I, I, I've been attending all these seminars since 20, 2010. I attended this leadership seminar in 2010. And during, one, during one, one of the meditation activities, I had a vision that I was speaking in um, a huge auditorium, something like Radio City Hall, right? I was in, standing in this huge auditorium full of women. And I was just standing there and they were giving me this, this like standing ovation. And I was like, back then, I was like, what the hell was that? That didn't make sense because um, remember, I had a desk job as a marketing executive in 2010. So I was like, it didn't make, make sense to me. But when I read the website, I was like having flashbacks of that vision. And I, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I think this is it. This is it. Imagine that's vision in 2010 and the year was 2016. I'm like, what the hell is that? But then when I did get to speak to Maz and I found out about the course fee, mm-hmm. I kind of, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, I, so at that time I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't. The timing was really off. I mean, okay, so Philippines is a third world country. We are, we are not exactly known for affluence, affluence and luxury, mm. right? So at that time, I felt it was a luxury to get to the course. But the calling was stronger than the money. You understand what I'm, what I'm saying? Absolutely. The, the, yeah, the pull was so stronger than the excuse about the course fee. So that was 2016, and I'm like... Oh, sorry. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> I, 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 I really got to do this. I really got to do this. Um, yeah. And then fast forward a few months later, my fa- I, we found out. This was uh, 2017. Um, January, we found out my father had stage four cancer. So at that time, I was already so ready to swipe my credit card to pay for the course, to join the February batch, but I couldn't because my dad got sick. So you could imagine my dreams were like, <sighs> because I mean, from the Philippines, right? So I have to pay for plane fare. I have to pay for hotel. I have to pay for food, whatever. Uh, um, there were so many expenses I had to consider just to fly to Australia. Yeah. And, um, but I had to prioritize my dad because I was the... I, I was the kind of breadwinner for the family, so I had to prioritize hospitalization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But at the same time, my mind was still, I still got to do this, right? I'm going to take care of my dad, but I'm still going to do this. So despite the hospital fees, I to taking the June 2017 course. Yep. I still said yes. Um, Sadly, my father passed away in May. But three weeks later, I found myself in Australia. Yeah. So. That must have been, I mean, yes, sorry, we we just had a bit of a delay. That, that, That story, Reza, oh my God, that inspires me so much because, you know, I I talk to a lot of women and finance is often the number one thing that stops women from ever, you know, following their dreams and investing in themselves. Second to that, it's family. And so you had this opportunity present itself to you that was, you know, number one challenge, finances. Second challenge, a significant family situation that you needed to navigate. And yet you still managed to find a way to make it happen because, and I'm, I'm sort of, um, not to quote you back, but you said the, the reason was stronger than the excuse that you could come up with. That is yeah, incredible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for me, Brie, uh, the why was clear for me, right? Uh, it was, right? I knew it was my money program that yeah. were being pushed. My buttons were being pushed. And then I recognized that. Because what is the investment now, at that, or sorry, that time, mm. I, so it's not an expense, right? It's an investment in myself. Yep. 
the I knew even if I had not yet gone to Australia at that time, I knew that the long-term benefit would be outweighing or to be far greater than the short-term inconvenience of having to shell out that mm. that big amount. Mm. Right? So so there, that, that's how I found myself uh, in, in Brisbane at that time. So, And it's, it's again, you know, you had this other obstacle because, and, you know, thank God for COVID in a lot of respects because our, our training is now online. But back in 2017, you know, we, we didn't believe that we could train our students online. So, you know, the, the fact that you had to travel, you know, from a family that I imagine was still in the midst of grieving your father and the, the additional expenses that go along with travel speaks absolute volumes for the commitment that you had to the outcome to you know train yourself up in a modality that a set yourself free but b gave you the ability to be able to help other women women that you'd been helping to a degree with your existing training but knew it wasn't quite hitting the head the nail on the head you know that oh, takes oh a hell of a lot of guts and a hell of a lot of courage to be able to do that thank you thank you yeah. um maybe it's also a bit of stubbornness <laughs> No, but really, I mean, not not to not to put down NLP, right? Mm -hmm. It did, it did have its benefits for me, but I found like my the issues that I had thought I addressed when I NLP coaching. I thought that they they came back. Yeah, actually, the issues came back, and um, yeah, so that's why I was not feeling complete, or I wasn't feeling whole in terms of being able to deliver results because I couldn't even see the full results in myself. And for women, that, that sense of integrity to be able to not just talk the talk, but walk the walk in that you've had, yeah. the, you know that it works, that speaks volumes. Women can see through bullshit. We, we can see when someone is, is hiding an insecurity through a fake smile and the difference between that and a genuine, this is absolutely going to help you. There is a big difference that women pick up on. True. And you know what? Uh, really, the videos, the YouTube videos, I think helped a lot. Uh, yeah. Just putting the testimonials out there of the, of the past clients or transformologists mm. because I mean, my online presence isn't the best right now. I haven't had time to really, you know, put all my digital assets in place. But after I talk to a client, later on, they come back to me and some of them have given feedback. Okay, so I've watched videos and I've checked the website and I'm good with it. So it's like, yeah, so all, all the testimonials about real women going through real transformations really, really help. So. Yeah. And it's, I'm glad you said that because, again, knowing women in business, a lot of the time we think we've got to have all the ducks lined up in a row before we can take any action. And in, in this particular model... It was like that. Yeah. I was like that before. <laughs> and it's debilitating, isn't it? Because, you know, you, it, it's that... It's almost the curse of perfectionism as well because you can't take that next step until the first step is completely organized and you've got all of the, the ifs, buts, uh -huh. maybe what ifs sorted out. And what I'm hearing uh -huh. you say, even though you yeah, didn't have, what if, what if it's blah, it's blah. yeah. And and you didn't necessarily have everything lined up and ready to go, but yeah. you utilized the resources that were available to you, and that was what allowed you to attract, you know, the, the few people that you have been able to work with. Yes, exactly. So thanks, thanks for mentioning that, Brie, because um, what happened, so I have been also receiving Creatrix as part of my license of um, getting interest support. So in the times that I received interest support, I have an almost immediate breakthrough afterwards. For example, I just officially launched myself mm -hmm. last year. July of last year, okay, so it's only been a year. Yeah. Um, but prior to that, whenever I would create tricks and issue, switch, and I would make decision, the decision just starts in my heart and in my head, right? When I make that decision, suddenly the universe just opens up an opportunity. Mm. So 
like last year when I just made that decision, okay, I am going to come out and speak about being a transformologist. The confidence just patients to speak to all this. And that's what attract um, my my initial audience. Yeah. But as months went on, as months went on, um, now I will be getting referrals uh, just by word of mouth. Yes, yes. All right. I just want to recap what you were just saying. So you, you said that Throughout the period of time, so you trained in 2017, you launched your business in 2019. And in that two year period, you continued to work on yourself to build up your own confidence. Because we know, again, as women in business, the more confident we feel, the easier it is to take action. And you said, yeah. and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you said you did work around who am I and how am I going to speak about who am I to the world? And as a result, actually, well, yeah, yeah, I I actually had uh, even more questions beyond that, right? One of the one of the biggest concerns that I had was um, being in the Philippines. My, the biggest mm -hmm. concerns was like third world country. The Philippines yeah. can't afford great tricks. That was my belief. I was like, because I was already a coach. I was I was daunted by the cost of creatrix so i'm like okay now that i'm going to bring it to my country can they afford it can they afford yeah. it and i actually had the creatrix that believe too and what have you found since the creatrix that? that believe too <laughs> so so you identified a limiting <laughs> yes and then you creatrix it what has happened since creatrixing and reframing that limiting belief uh I had clients. I had clients coming in. Um, so, so, yeah. I, again, right? It's that shift in energy. Yep. For 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 women who who find it freaky. I apologize if you find it freaky, but for women who understand, it's like once that block just got cleared out, it just comes in. Yeah. It just comes in. So, I'm not saying that they're coming in droves, right? I'm not saying it com it's coming in droves, but very recently when I did make that decision to to step away from my data science company, mm -hmm. and this was just a month ago, yep. okay, a month ago, uh, let's just put it as since, was it a month? Oh my God, it's not even a month ago. I think just, <laughs> it was just a few weeks, one, two, three, Three weeks ago, okay, it was only three weeks ago when I decided to to step away from my data science company. Uh, let's just say now I have about seven clients lined up. Two are active, meaning yep. they're in the program. Yep. Five are going through uh, the process before I qualify them. Yeah. So it's like seven new clients in three weeks, Bree. Which is just amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> like, yeah. And I, I really that. love it that there's this. You go. Yeah, I love it that there's this, this process, this duty of care as a transformologist, because that process really, really gave me so much clarity. And I also decided to drop my 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 ego okay i used to be the kind of person i i i figured this out on my own i'm going to do this my way i'm going to do this my style i was like that for a bit honestly <laughs> so after like okay my stubbornness is not working i will trust the process the tr the process of the transformologist and then when i placed my trust on that that's when things just like opened up what so what i'm hearing you say and this is this is what's important and this is what i know women particularly in the industry of personal development are craving they want to know that there's a space for them to be able to grow themselves for them to safely identify their limiting beliefs and then a process that enables them to reframe them so they can reach more clients 
They want to know that there's a community that is not force, force, force and hustle, 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 but giving you the space to grow on your own because we all have our own journeys that we need to, to make. And there's no, it's not a race. You know, we, we get to where we get to when we're meant to get there. And as a result of taking your time, identifying and working on your own limiting beliefs, living your best life, you're now in a position where you've been able to make a confident decision to start full time in your business. And as a result of all of that, in three weeks, you've got seven clients either in the process or going through the process to be working. Yeah. With. Yeah. It's like, Brie, it, and, and they're not just from the Philippines. Yeah. Right. I, I, I have been getting inquiries from, from women from other countries and I'm like, how, how did you hear of me? It's it's uh, also word of mouth, and I, I'm just getting goosebumps while I while I'm speaking. So yeah. my potential income mm. three weeks ago, the amount I'll be earning is so much more than the salary I was getting over a six month period. And you've done that in three weeks. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. It, it, wow. You know, wow. it's, and I think this is, this is why we are doing this interview series, because we know it takes all sorts of real women to help real women. And the journey as such is real. It's not necessarily this, you know, overnight success story. A lot of the time it takes it's not. time to work on yourself, to develop your skill base, to, you know, create that community around you that is going to continue keeping you in the same direction. And all of that is yeah. okay because at the end of the day, when you're ready to take action and you're ready to, to step into that next level of growth, you're going to be ready for it. And look at what's yeah, happening. Yeah, definitely. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So if there was a woman watching this, this interview, this conversation with you, and she was thinking, shit, there's parts of Rosa's story that just seem so familiar to me and where she is now seems so inspiring, but could I ever do that? What, what would you say to her if she was where you were over these past few years while you've been going through the growth that you've been going through? One of the first things was really just creatrix that doubt. Creatrix it out. <laughs> because self-doubt, perfectionism, um, insecurity, um, wanting to know everything or wanting to control everything, those things never serve, mm -hmm. never serve anyone. At least I'm okay, I'm speaking for myself. Those things never served me, right? So the longer I was holding on to those issues, the longer it took for me to come into this space that I am in now. So when I recognized it, Okay, when I recognized it and I acknowledged it for myself that I was the biggest barrier, I was the biggest block to my own success, that's when I said, I got to work on me. I got to work on me and the excuses no longer serve any purpose because why delay? Why delay what my heart was telling me? Why delay? And get older, right? Why wait until I was older? No, I mean, no way, not not anymore. So, it's when it when when you recognize it. Okay, well, so there are messages that you will watch, when messages that you will hear and receive when you're watching all sorts of videos. One of them would be the videos about about creatrix or about transformology, right? When you feel your heart just have that spark. When you suddenly feel butterflies, especially us women, right? Our intuition can, can just shout out and recognize when you've met the one. Okay, I'm not talking about the one lifetime partner, but when, when you've met something that you know is speaking or resonating to you, just go for it. All right? Because it's not, it's your truth. Or your your unconscious just trying to shout out and say, "This is it! This is it!" So why delay it? 
why allow the blocks and barriers to get in the way when you know it's for you? Oh, my God. And so one last question for you, and this has been one of my favorite questions to ask over the recent weeks. What's it like when you've been able to work with a real woman who's experiencing real pain, real emotional blocks, real limiting beliefs, and you're able to set her free so she feels more self-esteem, more confidence, more self-worth through Creatrix? What has that been like for you as the facilitating transformologist? Okay, so my, my background, my reality, I have been actually working on healing and helping set people free since for the longest time, probably for more than 20 years of my life. But I've never seen the results that I've seen when I am a creatrix facilitator. When I'm when I'm going when I'm using the process of creatrix. All right. Again, I've been in the process, I've been in that that space of setting people free. But the amount of results or freedom that I'm seeing in a client with Creatrix, I am still mind blown up to now. Case in point, last night, I had a client with five pages of issues. Five pages. I'm like, I have never seen an issues list this long. Okay. After our session, all her tens and her nines, which were what, 95% of her is level 10, level 9 pain issue. After the session, she only had three left. She had only three left that were a level 10. Everything was like down to a six, four, or a three. And I'm like, how amazing is that? So how did that feel for you <laughs> to be able to do that? To take five pages of pain and issues from a client, which were ratings nine and 10, in one single session down to you know threes and fours how did that feel for you being able to deliver those kind of results my heart was 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 so full my heart up to now my heart just felt so full full of relief full of joy full of sometimes it's just hard to explain it but it's just like a kind of feeling <laughs> you get what i mean right yeah. <laughs> it's a real thing <laughs> yeah yeah fantastic well reza thank you so much for your time today thank you for calling in from the philippines i i would love to My talk pleasure. to you again in another six months or so just to see how you've been over the sure. six months that you know you're out there and you're building your business on purpose you know, you've taken the time to develop yourself and to peel back the layers and step up to where you felt you needed to be to be able to go out there and then speak freely. And in a short period of time, you've already made such a big difference. Um, you know, it's, it's wonderful. And I really look forward to continuing to see that level of growth because ultimately, when you're able to grow as a facilitator, as a transmologist, and you're able to help other women, the, the ultimate goal of what we do is to help her and the more successful you are in layman's terms that means you've helped another woman to feel better about herself and that is all that we're about totally agree before we end i just want to say one of the biggest things i appreciate about being a transformologist is the network and the support the network and the support um because for others, it's like you get the training and then bye-bye, right? Yeah. But as a transformologist, the, the support that I continue getting ever since 2017 is priceless, totally priceless. So I'd like to thank you and the team and Maz for that one, for like just, just you know, cheering us up without, without beating us up for, for, not, for not, you know, for not being perfect because who's perfect anyway, right? But I really, I, I just have to say that I really am so grateful and so thankful for, for all the work that you guys, you ladies have been doing. Thank you. Um, it's 
to support all of us. So thank you. Thank oh, you. You're that. welcome. Look, and, and I know I can speak confidently on behalf of the team. We do it because you know we love to see real women succeed. You know, to hear your story and to hear the story of we've got you know 260 plus transformologists now in I think it's 18 or 19 countries around the world. Yeah. And to be able to support women from different <laughs> backgrounds and different belief systems, different cultures all come together for the same purpose of just making a difference for other women on the world. It is such a privilege to be a part of it. And, you know, I, I, I consider us all sisters because it's just, it's a very special organization. Yes, definitely. It, it, it really, really is. And I am just so proud to be part of this organization. Well, Dal, we're proud to have you with us. So thank you so thank much you. For that you do for all your contributions. Thank you for your time today. And ladies, if you have watched our conversation today and you're feeling our hearts and it's connecting with the vision that you have for your own life, no matter what obstacles come your way, as Reza says, you know, the excuses are only going to be as big as you allow them to be. And if your purpose is bigger to live your best life, to transform other women's lives, then we would warmly welcome you into Creatrix Transformology because we know that it's the, it's the way of the future for women. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Reza.